art and design has sort of always been part of my life. Um, my mother was actually a graphic artist and I remember sitting with her, she was a freelancer, and I remember sitting with her at the earliest age of around about four, trying to sort of do some design work next to her in the days of letter set and um, typeface when they worked on a, an old school way before computers really came through. So a lot of clients want a sort of um, clean, sort of untouched, presentable front of house when they're entertaining and then an area out the, sort of off the side or behind the scenes that has a full working kitchen space. So a lot of it we're finding is still sort of a push away from a sort of a typical dining room table and more sort of seating around an island situation or connection with that island. And I am definitely seeing a drive towards um, more sort of integration of, of appliances and a seamless look. So it, can, it no longer just reads as a kitchen within the room. It's a little bit more articulated and pieces of furniture. Where I'm sort of seeing bathrooms, head is a little bit more sort of monolithic and clean. A lot of clients don't like grout lines on tiles, so the bigger format you can go, the better from that perspective. But also just a quite a monolithic soft space that is another room rather than quite a utility space. So that's where I sort of see our direction going with bathrooms, which is quite exciting. The good thing is just have real clarity on your brief and what you're wanting. And also budget is a, is a big one. No one likes to talk about money in <laughs> New Zealand, but it is such a critical element to sort of rip that bandage off and discuss it with your designer and be really open and honest about it. And my only other advice I would really strongly give people embarking on sort of a renovation um, is, or even a new build, is often what you don't do, you will most regret down the track. So it's just being clever and savvy with that. Good question. <laughs> so don't buy appliances until you have a plan. That's probably the big 101 for most people because appliances really can drive a design because sometimes what you think you, you need or like doesn't always work within that space. Shifting any plumbing, there is a cost, especially if you're starting to tackle foundations and also most Bathroom renovations will require a building consent from a perspective of as soon as you touch any waterproofing or tanking in a bathroom with tiles, you've got to get a minor um, consent um, or exemption of consent in New Zealand. So it's just really thinking through some of those hidden costs come into play with your budget. Bathrooms, for example, have come a long way with some of the um, bathroom joinery. So you can be really clever and savvy with that. Um, some actually have some really lovely um, soft matte acrylic bench tops that are integrated within the joinery unit as well. And how you apply tiles, where you apply tiles, lighting. You can create a really lovely wow space, even just with clever lighting. So, and quite a cost effective tile. So if you are on a budget, I would suggest maybe looking at that. And that's where including a designer um, into a project is really valuable. You know, they can see areas that you can actually be clever and, and save some money. We're still seeing quite a dark, sort of moody palettes coming through or direction from plants and a lot of natural stone. And of course, curves are in, fluting is in um, glass and a little bit back to sort of um, connection with metals and metallics but a little bit more refined and elegant. I think that we come to it with sort of um, number eight wire if I can use that terminology um, and, and not from a cost-effective perspective, but we as designers, I find, like to push the boundaries. We're good at problem solving, we're good at finding solutions, and at the end of the day, that's what designers is, it's putting a puzzle together. Um, so, 